Tonight on a special episode of Game Night, Nikki, Lincoln, Mark, Aaron, Rusty, and me, Dave, are going to discuss the Spiel des Jahres, the three games up for the main prize and the three games up for the Kenner Spiel. This, of course, is for the year 2017. Let's get to it. These are the six games that have been nominated. These are the main Spiel des Jahres prize, and this is the Kenner Spiel here. This is the more family one. We'll start here, and Aaron, why don't you just pick one and we'll work our way from there. Okay, I think the most inventive and exciting and impactful one for me is Magic Maze, for sure. Okay. It's the Hanabi or Time Stories of this group where it's just like, oh, I haven't seen that before, and it's exciting and new, and it makes for a really interesting experience. Um, if you haven't watched the episode where we played it or you don't know, you know what I'm talking about, you don't talk during the game and you just make your move when you can make your move and you can't even signal to the player next to you that it's their turn on, without <laughs> putting the meeple in front of them. But it's, it's that genius, brilliant thing where we're all working towards the same goal, but we can't say a single thing except for those pauses in the game where we discuss strategy. It's, and it's just that one of those... Where a game where it takes one simple thing to just launch gameplay into a whole nother stratosphere. And that uh, I don't know that I'll want to play that game up forever or for the rest of my life, but it's just, it's really innovative, I thought. Okay, Nikki, what about you? What do you think about Magic Maze? Magic Maze is a lot of fun. It's extremely frustrating. <laughs> yeah. um, we all heard my, my issues with the banging of the red piece on the table, which drives me bananas. Um, I, I did enjoy it though, and I like that there are different scenario setups, a whole bunch of them mm -hmm. in the game box. So the the opening game is is a lot of fun and and dif difficult on its own. But if you need even more problems, they they got them <laughs> for you in there. So um, I, I had fun with it. Mark, I think. Aaron kind of nailed it for me too, where it's it's the innovative choice, the most innovative choice of the three of them, I think. But at the same time, it's probably not one that I would play over and over again in my collection. I know what you know. Nikki's exactly right. I was I only played it once, but you showed me how there's this. I don't know if they call it a campaign mode or whatever it is. There's this series of things you can right. go the way through. So the, it adds complications, right? It adds. Yeah, but there's even a little quasi. Is it quasi storyish? Connecting, it things, yeah, connecting yeah, campaign, right? sort of. Um, Anyway, so that part's cool and would give it a little bit more legs. Um, but it's the sort of game I feel like if I was at a convention or something, I would be happy to like give it a try right. or play someone else's copy or something like that. But it wouldn't necessarily be one I felt like, oh, i got to have that on my, my shelf. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. What do you, what do you think? I, I love the flexibility of it. The number of players, the ability to just say, okay, we're going to play with two or we're going to play with six. It didn't yeah, change the... Eight. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eight. Yeah, you want to go crazy. It didn't change how frantic the game became it didn't change that stress level everyone was still i've got to be involved and everyone is involved at all times regardless of how many players there are and there are many games out there that you know you go from two to four the game changes so dramatically that doesn't happen here yeah, yeah. it's a good good scaling yeah mm. that makes sense link i really like the game i was knocked out the first time we played it and eagerly uh contacted the publisher to try to get a copy as soon as possible because it really really impressed me i had no I did not think it was going to get nominated because I was told it was ineligible, but I'm very happy that it did get nominated because I don't think it would have made it to next year and potentially get nominated. Mm. At least it's got that going for it. Um, and, I'm, the, you know, I, I'm going to do the Nikki thing. Uh, <laughs> the art is amazing. It's really, really fun. There's a lot of great stuff inside there. And uh, it's... I just... When I... I liked the game, but when I edited it... I the grew episode? to love the game. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about, that's where that was going. Well, I, fi I just freaked out how great and fun it was to even just watch, right? To see people taking their role yeah. and, you know, trying to communicate that something was wrong. Like, you're, if somebody does something wrong, you're allowed to say, hey, that's wrong and take it back. But Illegal. it was fun to yeah. see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, not, yeah not, the, not an incorrect move, but, <laughs> but an actually illegal move. <laughs> Um, but I really, really think it's a great game. There are a lot of games, I mean, you could say about any game that it's sort of player dependent. There are, but there are games that are more player dependent than others. And my worry about this was that it might be too player dependent, that it might not be, like all you need is one or two like people that aren't into it or whatever to sort of kill it. And while that's possible, 
the thing I really like is that if you are with players, which is the most, the, the majority of players you're gonna play with, if you're with players that are into it and it's fun, it is sort of even more fun. The, the game really complements that part of your personality in a way, does that make sense? And that the fact that you can't speak is also great because it allows people who are not necessarily extroverts to still be extroverts in this game. And so in a way it's like, it's a party, it's kind of almost a party game. Yeah, yeah, though, sure, you know what absolutely. I mean? It has, that, it has that party game feel. There is a sameness to it for me as well, Mark. I don't know, I don't know, like, I, I have no desire to do the whole campaign situation, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't play it every now and then, you know what I mean? I could see three or four years from now, absolutely, someone says, let's play Magic Maze, totally playing it. Absolutely. Don't you think? I mean, and it's kind of a good midnight game too, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God! If you, had, if, you were, if you were drinking, <laughs> that can yeah. be very interesting. Very well, interesting. Plus, it's fifteen minutes, which you know leads us right to King Domino, which okay. is another fifteen-minute game. Beautiful segue, <laughs> sir. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, I really was. Uh, I really was impressed with King Domino. It's such a simple concept. Um, and matching the tiles to the train, which, I mean, obviously some of us are not that good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it's trickier than it looks. <laughs> and, then, and the math is hard, Yeah, too. the math, I don't understand. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about our space program, Mark. I gotta say. Uh, but I'm really, really impressed with that game. I, I mean, I, I, I heard it was really good, because you actually reported back that it was fun. Um, but it's... There's a, there's a lot going on in that actually. Yeah. I mean, I love the I love the choice order that you have, and when you're going first, you get to last if you're the last to place. You'll get to be the first to. Uh, there's an elegance to this that yeah. I really really love. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert: I think this is my favorite of the three, but it was really we'll we'll get to that. It was yeah. a crazy hard this I agree. year. Agree. These are all really tough choices. Uh, uh, I never liked cities, and so my worry was that this was going to be that. Oh, it, the game cities. Yeah. yeah, and boy, is it not. Like, it's such a better version of that essential, that yeah. kind of same thing. Um, but we can get to that later. Go ahead, Aaron, what do you think? Let me tell you all my thoughts about King Dong, though. Okay. Oh. Oh, hey. oh, 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 we must have been talking about something really boring. <laughs> I fell asleep. I, I have, like, nothing positive to say about this game. <laughs> it is so... I. It could be considered elegant, but it really, nothing about it grabs me. It, it doesn't do anything new. Right. It doesn't do anything engaging to me. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, I would never pick it off the shelf and say, hey, you guys want to play this? It's, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. spoiler alert, as we get to the heavier side of the table, like, that's where my tastes lie. You yeah, know, like, sure. I'm a, I prefer a two to three hour experience than a, 15 to 20 minute game in most, most I can situations. Make it two hours next time you want to well, play. Well, that, <laughs> that doesn't sound that funny. We yeah. play it with, it the, just, with two sets, too, is what I heard about, mm, which I didn't yeah. even know that was a, a way but of That doing. sounds kind of interesting. And, now, and uh, you guys played with the basic rule set, but talked about the uh, right, we need variants, the, we need the, 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 the caves and the, the perfect grids. Like Those might make it a little more interesting to me, add a little complexity onto it. But just like out of the box, the basic game is just. Not much of a game to me. Wow, yeah. Rusty. It's, it's funny because I'm kind of the opposite of that. Uh, what draws me to King Domino is the fact that it is a shorter game. It is something that I can get through quickly, and I might not have the optimal game experience of uh, building this great long-term strategy. But once it's done, I can get back into the game and try it again. And it's it's 15 minutes out of my life, and I can play it again and have a different experience a second time. So. Um, for me, the the shortness of it, the the lightness of it, does actually appeal to me more than more the heavier game. So we're kind of opposite there. So, well, I agree with you in that like being bitten by a weasel for five minutes is better than being bitten <laughs> by a weasel for forty five minutes. So there is, I could say, the shortness is good for. No, I I will say one positive thing about the game that uh, the the turn the turn order selection yeah. going along with selecting the tile that yeah. may or may not work in your array is a very clever game mechanic. And I think any great game sort of needs one new innovative thing like that. So that's new and innovative? Even though you it said just, earlier it has nothing new and innovative? No, I said it has nothing that grabs me and really makes me <laughs> want right. to play it again. I, I'm saying that is its new and innovative hook if there is one. Yeah. It just doesn't really work 100% for me. Let's get an opposite opinion, Nikki. 
Yes. I know you love this one. I did like it. It's a tile laying game. It's a lot of fun. I like organizing my world, and uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot. And I and going to something that I had been talking to Lincoln about is that I really enjoyed that placement of your pieces determining your yeah the drill your your, Which, your order what yeah. what, uh, what turn order what turn order right. was going to be because yeah. that got me a couple times in the game and I've played games where that deter where you place yourself determines the term <clears throat> turn order later but um, that. It got me a few times where it was like, oh, I knew I needed to be right. first the next turn, but I knew I needed this tile to complete, you know, to get into the actual real scoring of of um, the areas. So. See, the, the heavier games where there's there's a lot of what I consider to be more chewy games where <laughs> turn order is determined by stuff that you do. And my problem with those is I just, I'm so... It's so tough for me sometimes, and I just don't get the fun out of trying to think that far ahead. And that's the well, this one has a simplistic version of that. Here is what I dig. Well, because of the value of the tiles, right? Yeah. The 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 lower number tiles, which you may not necessarily need, don't be fooled. Those can be valuable later on once right. you've established, or if you swing for the fences like we did, that could be beneficial. You know. Yeah. Mark. So I'm also the opposite of Aaron in that I always prefer the Spiel des Jahres type of game over the Kinderspiel. And we know that about each other. So, and I really like, I really like King Domino. I liked it a lot, despite my struggles with it. Rule <laughs> <laughs> wise, I don't know what the deal was. It was near the end of a long day. I'm, Is that what I'm going to grant you yeah, that. Let's, sure. let's go with that. Yeah. But you were still in France in your head. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, or do that. Is that how they add in France? Is it 16 months <laughs> oh, you won. You got to cheat, but you won. That's, uh -huh. all, that's all that matters. Okay. Well, I like. It feels like a card game to me, almost. Right. Uh, the tiles are really nice, and it needs to be tiles. It would not be very much fun if it was cards. But it, what it reminds me of are the kind of games, like Colorado, like uh, mm -hmm. For Sale, mm -hmm. like Ostergaier, mm -hmm. that have like one clever idea in them. And a lot of my friends have always thought like, that's really cool. I wish it was in more of a game. And I usually think, no, I like it by itself. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty awesome just by itself. I'd rather play Colorado than Zilloretto or something like that. So King Domino feels like that to me. But, and this may sound like a little thing, but instead of a little pack of cards, it's a small box, but it's a box and it's a tile and you play out in a board. And there's mm -hmm. lots of times I like filler games, but I wish they just had a little bit more presence, like for a lunch hour game. This is mm -hmm. perfect lunch hour game. And it being so short, it's You're saying you like ways. that it's not cards. I like that it's a filler, it's a filler board game is what it is. Yeah. And, um... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, but, I don't know if a filler board game, as much as I like it, and it's an insta-buy for me, and I'm going to play it over and over, that doesn't mean it's Spiel des Jahres, I'm not sure. But All I right. definitely love it, you know, and like I said, insta-buy. Well, take us to El Dorado, then. Well, my next, so, okay. So El Dorado. Uh, you mean wet lauf. Wet lauf. Wet lauf. Yes, I did. I did mean that. Thank okay. you. Race to El Dorado. We can, we can now use the short title from then on. Right. Uh, well, so Reiner Knizia. It just yes. sort of like if you're in the hobby for a while, it just, it's instantly interesting. It's like, hey, what's Reiner Knizia doing? We haven't seen him for a long time. Or we haven't seen him in a big way for a long time. I was going to say, I think there could be even people watching or who, that have Don't gotten into the it. hobby. In the last four or five years, what, that, that, that I've never heard of him. No, <laughs> that's crazy. You don't think so? Crazy talk. I was going to say that no. all of us old timers who've been in the hobby for 10, 15, 20 years, like, we know all his classic games, and but what has he done lately? Right, yeah. It's true. He hasn't done much lately. Yeah, I never look him up. I don't know what the stats are. I always assume he's got like 15 games every year. I'm sure yes. that's probably true. Yes. They probably but don't, maybe, maybe don't even have his he game. Has a new, it's just all like licenses things and he's making scads of money. He's he got just a brand hasn't new had a Vichy card game that we want to try to play. <laughs> he true. just hasn't yeah. had a big hit that's been on all of our radars and on all of our tables in the last few years. Yeah, that's for sure. That's true. I think because he decided to actually make money. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark. Okay, but besides just the name recognition of that um you know it's uh deck building which i like it's deck building blended with a board i like that even better probably and um it was uh it seemed like it had some stuff in the box meaning it's a pretty short game but there were different at least map layouts and everything not a different i had hoped there was whole different sets of cards maybe that could come later i don't know but um it i'm trying to Listen for did it? Did it have that like Knizia magic that we used to always see? And I don't know if it did or not, but it was really pretty cool, and I yeah. liked it. And it felt like the sort of 
I don't know. I was just saying how Magic Maze was a game that was innovative, but not my thing. King Domino is exactly my thing, but even short for me, maybe in terms of Spill the Shards, El Dorado ends up sort of hitting that middle spot where it's like, there's it's something pretty awesome to play. I could play it several times over and over, you know, year after year. Yeah. It has that sort of quasi evergreen feel to me that could be, I mean, we're only one year in or part of a year in. Right. But, um, and it was surprisingly short, actually. When we set it up and, and went through it with the board play, I thought, oh, this is going to be, Yeah. I guess maybe it was the full hour, but it felt really fast. Yeah. So I liked it quite a bit. Rusty? Uh, like the title is in English, Race for El Dorado, the game does feel fast. It's it's this thing that you're constantly going. But the twist on the uh, the deck building that I preferred was that you can't add cards together. You're actually having to plan ahead for future action. Mm-hmm. You have to get that three yeah. paddle if you want to go across that three You can water. add gold if you play our game. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it, Only if you're Dave and you forget your own rules explanation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> ah, again, but end of the day. It's, yeah. it's that nice little twist that makes it instead of just, okay, well, I'll get lucky with, you know, hmm. collecting enough of that one card to get through this section. Yeah. You actually have to plan for it. You have to say, I know I'm going to need this, and then worry about the repercussions of now I'm going to have this in my deck afterwards mm-hmm. to get through areas that I don't need this for anymore. Right. And so it's that balance of, when do I want to plan for it? How long in before I start worrying about the heavy stuff? Hmm. Lincoln? There are definitely other maps on here, though, where your plan of, like, you know, I don't need as much gold at the last ha- uh, last tile, which um, we all kind of like, hooray, you know, but the <laughs> thing is, is that can be changed with the flipping of the tiles, or the map tiles. The other thing about this is it's got a bit of Salmon Run, Salmon Run is a mm-hmm. race game yeah. with a deck building element that yeah. has. Somebody pointed that out, and I was laughing because yeah. it had been something I was thinking about when I was editing it. And somebody mm-hmm. on YouTube pointed that out, I believe. Yeah. Um, but what I really like about it is <clears throat> it is very, very quick. And you have to think on your feet, and you have to determine am I going to buy or am I going to just run? And I had, in the game we played, I just had that weird, I think I all drew all. Movement cards and then all gold and yeah, that run. first starting yeah. turn was insane. Yeah, right. So that you just end up leaping ahead and then blocking everybody else. Sort of, yeah. Uh, and but, then having four gold. But bike. seeing the end, the, the the ability to run around people though because of other easier paths and yeah. stuff is great. Yeah. Because I've I played another game of this where I hit, I stopped on that spot where you have to discard just before mm-hmm. we have to discard three cards or there and somebody just said I'm not waiting and went around. And that was actually really, really powerful. They were able to not lose those three cards. I, of course, used... I had the card, uh, the the native card guide that let you move on to that without spending... uh, without discarding. But um, I know you guys are frustrated by those natives. Uh, And I... But I feel, again, after we had played, if you're in the lead, they're valuable. If you're in the back, they're valuable, but they're not as powerful. Because when you're in the back, you need those cards that give you... Five uh, yeah. machetes to multiple to, spaces to exactly. Move. Right. That's where I think that because it's expensive to get those cards. Not that it's not expensive to get those other, the, um, you know, the higher machete cards, the higher gold cards, and stuff like that, or the higher uh, wild, the one that mm-hmm. uh, the that one par- powerful wild card, which I think is also a burn it, isn't it? Once the four yes, four wild burn so. it, yeah. But I love that. I love the burning the cards thing because your deck ends up thinning up again if you play it correctly. Yep. Nikki, and, and that's how I was. I, I cycled through the cards so quickly too, because I had such a small day. Hmm. Um, I liked it. I liked the race element of it. I thought it was fun. There's, there was a feel of it to me, that it felt like an old school kind yeah. of game, mm-hmm. which I couldn't quite because I was trying to think. Well, what old school game has, the race element? in it and I couldn't think of the deck building plus race element. So I don't know if that's Canizia's mark is what I was feeling there when I was playing the game or or what, but I wouldn't say that's against it. I liked the old school feel of it because lately in recent years, it's all been about the new and what's different and this one's too much like this one and you know, it's it's this constant pushing forward, and there's nothing wrong with the older games, and there's nothing wrong with the older way of uh, 
thinking or playing through a game. Having said that, though, the whole race thing is not something that you would really find in an, old, in an mm. older game that I can think of. Well, I mean, um, uh, <clears throat> Mississippi Queen. I was thinking Mississippi Queen just because of the hexes. Well, yeah. And, yeah, and, 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 and but that's that explicitly a race. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a race. It's the race of yeah. El Dorado. That didn't fit it to me because yeah. in that one, there's that jinky like, okay, I got to wheel back this <laughs> yeah. this many so to turn right, into the dog and and yeah. turn <laughs> yeah. left, and all like, of that kind of stuff. So, um, but I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed. I don't think we talked about the the breaks that are oh. in yeah, the between obstacles. The, the obstacles. That was that's a neat element too. Uh, that it can uh, be a equalizer if you don't have the right mm -hmm. cards to get through that um, and you're trying to get the right things and people are catching up to you. Um, so there was a lot of interesting things to it. I liked it. I didn't uh, <clears throat> love it. It. You were talking about... It's, you know, a lot of games basically do the same thing every time. So when you say sometimes, well, this game feels kind of samey to me, it's like, well... There's plenty of games I play. Like, I love playing Emerald, for example. Yeah. And Emerald does the same thing every time. I mean, it'll Hold be different. Truth. Yeah, it'll be different based on what happens, but I'm trying to do yeah. the same thing every time. You know? So, I think you mentioned this when we played it that day the idea of having all the cards available was the, the thing. Every that, game. Yeah. Now, that might go away if I play it a few more times. And I'm sure that expansion cards can also come out, which is kind of neat. But there was, and again, I think that was on purpose. I don't think that Kenitsi necessarily wanted people to try to figure out, okay, what combinations work well with this set of cards, mm -hmm. right? Which is the thing I think that's really cool about Dominion, mm -hmm. is every game you're like, okay, here's the set I have to work with. Like, what's my potential path here? But also, I had that thing where, you know, I didn't realize how much of a race game it was when we played it. And the notion of sort of hanging back to catch up later just doesn't seem like that was gonna work regardless of my cards. But that's not, I don't think, I, I hope I'm not using that as my experience as sort of the ding against it. It was just, I don't know, the sameness of it to me. I don't know on the seventh or eighth play that just changing up those maps uh, would be enough for me. But I will absolutely play it again. I mean, it was very cool. Um, and I like that you only have four cards instead of five. Mm -hmm. And I like that your deck is actually not that big. By the end of the game, your deck is really not that huge. No, no, yeah. no. Partly because you are buying some cards that go away. Mm -hmm. But also partly because you just don't buy as many cards in the game. The game is over before you can sort of make too thick a deck, which I think is actually kind of cool. Aaron? Um, I think I've seen the English title now translated as Quest for El Dorado. Oh, that's probably... Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what they're going to go with. But... Um, I feel like this is maybe not a home run, but it does a lot of really interesting things pretty neatly, I think. Yeah. Um, I, unlike Mark, who might prefer Coloretto without all the Zuloretto chrome around it, I don't like a deck builder that doesn't have anything else going on with it. So I like that this is a deck builder with a race on the board going on to it. Um, and I like, I think it's, signature little bit of brilliance is that market where when something runs out, the next purchaser mm -hmm. chooses the thing to slide down. I think that's kind of brilliant. And it will only get more interesting as expansion cards likely f add more cards to that. Um, I love I love a game that's not the same every time. I do like Emerald, but I, w I don't want to play it that often because the board doesn't change. It was just a game that I know I'm I saying, personally love. It's true, it's, it's different tastes. It has a lot more replayability to me because yeah. you might not ever play the same map twice on this, right? right? You might be five hexes long and it might be seven and a half hexes long. And it might have lots of villages and it might have lots of jungle. And there's, there's just so many different setups here and I appreciate that modularity. Um, I also, I like the obstacles thing that Nikki mentioned. It's a way of not letting somebody just lead the pack forever because they have to pay all those extra costs mm -hmm. to cross the obstacles. Uh, I like the blocking and positioning. You know, I think there's, like I said, it's not perfect and doesn't make me go, this is a fantastic game, but it's got yeah. a lot of little neat, uh, you know, shining pieces that work pretty well into it, I think. It's interesting. I found, I, I felt like the obstacles were not really ultimately obstacle-y and they're tiebreakers, and it seems like the game is going to end with a lot of ties. So there's almost, you're, you almost have the incentive to break through those obstacles. Yeah, you know? maybe. 
Well, it depends on whether you want to spend, right? They can slide. Right. Because it, it, it advances your deck, right? You are spending cards to, it, whether it's um, discarding two cards or discounting a card or actually spending one of the types of, of, uh, of movement. That's the thing that I think is different, that is one of the more important different mm -hmm. things about this, is that it, you are collecting types of cards to move on certain types of terrain, which mm -hmm. is it feels different to me than... You know, I don't have the breadth of playing billions of games all the time, but that is something I'm not used to. Yeah. And the way that you use them is great, too. I love the not being able to stack them. I mm -hmm. do wish that you couldn't stack them to purchase, only because it's frustrating in that that happened in our play. It's just because you combine gold to buy cards, yeah. so it was hard for me it's, to remember yeah, that you, that don't you can't combine gold. Way. It's just a common thing you think yeah. about doing. Right. But... One more, the one, one more point about El Dorado. Right. Um, you mentioned during your play of it, and I think a couple of you kind of mentioned it, that it sort of seems like it might be over too quick, like it's one of those, that's, oh, that's, we're at the end of the game already. Yeah. But uh, that's another thing that makes me appreciate the modularity of it. Like, maybe that's not a knock against the game at all. Actually, I find, it, a lot of, sorry, I find a lot of deck builder games are that way. But, I, and, but that's why I'd rather just play a longer race. I, yeah. I'm someone who wants that... that that end game to go on just a little bit longer, so mm -hmm. that's a reason that I would almost say, let's break out this game and add a couple hexes to it, <laughs> not have it end right away from right. a like base setup. So, mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate that you can I, adjust that. I as don't you see game. that as a negative thing. I actually find that that's, I mean, the very first time I played Dominion, it was just all of a sudden over. But that was because I was so focused on, okay, if I do this and I can get to there, and, oh, wait, it's over? What yeah. Happened? What happened? <laughs> but if you do see that as a negative, <laughs> I don't, I actually. But I do, and ah. I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing on Eldorado, just because I was thinking about it. This is Spiel des Jahres, this family focused, right? Yeah. I mean, they all certainly would work with families. I think another thing that's a good trick in Eldorado, it seems to me like you can't, it's like what Lincoln says, you can't really get blocked or stuck. Not really. I can't remember when we played, anyone had a turn where it's, well, there's nothing I can do this right. turn. Mm. And I think that's. I mean, I think he had a lot of one hex moves because yeah, someone right. was blocking her best path. I mean, it wasn't yeah. she wasn't screwed, but it Somebody. definitely slowed her down. But I agree with you that the the ability to just count any card as half a gold, for example, mm -hmm. can be like, well, like I'm blocked and I can't do this. Well, all right, I'll buy something with this. It still hurts if it's like a three green and you're spending it for half a gold, but at least it yeah. gives you something to do. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Link, take us over here. Okay, well, um, I guess we'll start with Raiders of the North Sea, which we just played. And um, it's really kind of a neat game. It's a worker placement, but with a neat twist in the placement, where you place a, uh, a pawn and pull up a pawn. Yeah. And I really like that. I, I, you know, it's it's a weird one where the economy is tight, right? Because things come out of the game, and there's only so much you can gain on the board if you're not um, conquering, uh, raiding, uh, which is crazy. So it seems like there's a, a, a an arc mm -hmm. of like your engine, and then it kind of peters out because you can only do so much to rebuild your goods. Right. Um, and that's really kind of interesting, um, where it doesn't it doesn't necessarily steamroll to an end. Right. It's kind of like a three steps forward, two steps back thing, as opposed to slowly building an engine that just gets better and better and right. better as the mm -hmm. game goes. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if you had, I, in the game I played of it, there was. Um, I had a lot of the uh, Valhalla the tokens. Yeah. Oh. No, yeah, the, the Valkyries. The you killed a lot of yeah. crew members. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I killed a lot. And uh, <laughs> that was an interesting strategy. I don't know that it was ideal, but it was still interesting, you know? Right. Well, it's a trade-off. It gets you a lot of points on that track, but you lose your guys. And you're spending, and money. And you're spending a lot and of money. You lose all the money you spent yeah. on so the guys. To make that really valuable is you yeah. want the one that discounts <laughs> one silver yeah. per... Yeah. That would make that probably more powerful. Oh, that's true. Or or just set yourself up to kill to, cheap ones. Yeah, I played a game where I had the one, the, the Sage, which has got zero strength to it, but gives mm -hmm. me like a special double power. And then when I killed someone, it was like, okay, well, I used him already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he only cost me two. But yeah, it's it's a balance of that sort of thing. What do you think, mm -hmm. Nikki? Um, I enjoyed. It's an engine builder, so I had problems, as usual. <laughs> um, but uh, I liked it. I liked the cards. I liked the art on the cards. I liked that all these Viking dudes are hilarious. <laughs> um, and, and women. There were Viking women mm -hmm. in there, too. Um, I liked the board. I liked The board's that, beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> the idea of 
this is your starting area this is another mm -hmm. area this is another area and you can go to any of these sections in to this raid. area yeah, yeah. to raid provided you have the versus some straight path yes mm -hmm. so that was interesting and, and different and a little more evocative um, that way yeah to me in that way i liked the whole pawn thing where there were uh three colors of the pawns right and yeah. one color different did different some results. stuff another color did a bunch of stuff and then another color was kind of more specialized and did some of the higher level um mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that was interesting um too because a lot of times I was stuck with a higher level pawn, and I really wanted the low level one. To get like that the would extra get coins me more or whatever. coins, yeah, and yeah. it would be better for me. But I was stuck with the high level or the or the mid level one. So uh, I thought that pawn idea was interesting and different. I liked that too. that decision wasn't <clears throat> too complex. Like if someone had put down a white or a gray pawn down in the work area, and you were next, you're like, oh. Wow, I could get that now, but maybe that wasn't the action you wanted yes. to do. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't. Or maybe it was even But it worse. wasn't agonizing. It wasn't like, should I do this? Should I do that? It was more like, uh, uh, nah, I'll do this. Mm -hmm. Or, um, okay, I gotta take advantage of that. It wasn't overly complex. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that game quite a uh, Raiders of the North Sea, <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I think you guys have covered most of the good points about it. It's, okay, let's it's, see. <laughs> <laughs> mechanically, it's a fairly simple game. It's a worker placement yeah. game with yeah. some resource churn and, and victory point earning. But, you know, the geniuses of it is the... You have to put one down and pick one up every turn, and people may not have left the perfect sequence of actions for you. Yeah. I think we mentioned this, but you can always take one of the actions you want, but you may not be able to take both or in the proper order that you yes. that your turn mm -hmm. demands. Yeah. So there's there's really genius there, and in the the genius of the black, gray, and white meeples having different results, or even being able to only go on certain spaces. Those are both really clever game design elements that really uh, you know form the gameplay experience. It's really, and I honestly don't think that Raiders is much more complex. Or really more and much more involved than than the regular speed. I would games. agree, actually. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just I, it maybe take a little longer. I mean, you might not bust it out for a family game, but it's, it's possible that the take that card mechanically, it stop it from being a family. That game. might be it. Just that it's a little more maybe. aggressive. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think, Christy? Yeah. Um, I was thinking along the same lines that Raiders is kind of like the Spiels. Uh, it the funny thing is to me, it has a little bit of a race feel to it. And there's yeah. the ways to slow other people down is by getting to a location before they get to it. But also a bit of that take that mechanic with the cards in there. I'm not a big fan of take that mechanics, but this game didn't feel that heavy with the take that. No, they're not, they, they're not they, hugely they, damaging. No, they, it, was, it, it felt a little more balanced. Yes, there's a couple in there that can be you know pretty devastating to one person, but for the most part, I didn't even notice it during my they're first light. play. They're they light. They were light. So, um, I liked that that I had that ability and that things were happening to me, but I didn't feel like I was being knocked out of the game. Right. So it was well balanced in that fashion for being a lighter but heavier game at the same time. I so I, I I enjoyed the flow and it seemed to flow really well for me. So I like Raiders pretty well too. I mean I like Rusty was talking about, I mean take that as like a a yeah, dirty word. Dirty. I mean, that, when I heard that about the game, I thought, I don't think I'm going to like this. Then we, mm. when I played it, I played it a couple times, it was, oh, that's not really such a big deal. That's not really a problem. I still don't like it, though. It's I don't like having to select. Yes. Dave's beef about having to select a person. Yeah, I don't mind to take that card if it sort of hits everybody equally. Yes. But it's when you else. choose a player yeah. to do something, you fall into two potential traps of Hitting you, you might not know who the leader is, right? or worse, you might need, need a specific thing, and the person who has it could be the last place player, and it's still your best move to take that thing for your yeah. game. But the, the thing that mitigates them, which is nice, is that the take that side of the card is usually paired with a really good crew ability. Yeah. And often you don't want to necessarily play the take that card, because that crew ability might be like, ooh, I really want that. But back right. to you. But my issues with the game are, are different, and it's really just a matter of style, is that uh, I think I've heard it compared to Lords of Waterdeep. I think that's a pretty good comparison. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of 
done with worker placement games. I never really got on board that in the first place. It's not something I really enjoy. And the other because thing, probably was, that space was blocked and you couldn't get no, it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, and you mentioned resource churn. There's a lot of games that do resource churn, and people, other people, like that. I I don't like that. When when the game gets set up and I just see this a bunch constellation of, of cubes, and I know I'm going to be converting other cubes and other cubes, and I think, like, ah, uh, it's not really... I don't like that so much. Um, that said, it does flow. It, it flows really neat. It's got a little sprinkling of theme that really kind of matters, um, <laughs> uh, or at least helps, right? Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, I played it twice, and in, uh, I did appreciate that in just the way those cubes, that also sort of bothered me the way you have to deal with them, the way they, just the random initial population, yes. it is random, right? Yes. It made the game skew differently. Absolutely. So in one game, there was like all that gold for victory points for the easy harbors, and the other one... Right. You know, you had to go oh, way up there. Right. You don't so, have any iron until you get to this area. Or yeah. Something. yeah. So that part was kind of clever. So I mean, it's it's it to me, it's 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 uh, pretty innocuous as a worker placement game goes, but it's not my favorite kind of thing. Well, you've been to Mars. Let's talk about terraforming Mars. <laughs> I've not been to Mars. What, Mark? You haven't been to Mars? No, I, no, it's true though. I'm I'm in the Mars business, and it is <laughs> funny. People, anytime there's let alone Mars, a space game, everyone says, oh, you must love that game. <laughs> like, no, and I haven't even played it in many cases because if it's deep or too long, because I don't like deep and too long games, all the space games are that way because they're trying to be realistic yeah. or something yeah. like that, like, which is no fun. <laughs> um, but Terraforming Mars wasn't that way. Honestly, I was a little hesitant to play it because of that sort yeah. of... Um, momentum yeah. in my mind about that. And it's then, not as complicated as, you, as it seems, though. Ultimately. It isn't. It's, no. it's got several things going for it. So when I finally played it, it was like, oh, it wasn't as complicated. Uh, it wasn't as long, which is the other thing I worried about. And we played it three-player, which I hear is probably maybe a sweet spot for the game. It doesn't... It's interesting, because the end game condition is the same, and with a fourth player, you can get to that faster. So it's a trade-off of, is that fourth player's extra decisions <laughs> sure. drawing it out? And if it isn't, it actually could be faster with four players. Could be, right. I was glad to play it with three, though, just the same. And, you know, it did feel, uh, what's the opposite of generic? I mean, it's thematic. Oh, I mean, yeah. It felt yeah. like the cards, I mean, I definitely bought cards that I thought this may not be the best play for me, but man, that is cool. That's a cool <laughs> idea. Yeah. I mean, in my, op oh, in my you're open, such a theme gamer. In my opening hand, I get the Mars Rover. I mean, wow, the yeah. Mars Rover. So I thought, well, I'm... I'm keeping that one. And later on, giant space mirror. Well, I'm keeping that one too. You know, so I couldn't help it. And uh, and then I hear about you know astrobiology, and I was like, apparently I need to keep that one too. So you know, it, I I I fell for the theme way more than I thought I would. I guess as much as everyone else thought I would. I actually finally clicked yeah. with the space game. So I liked it quite a bit. That said, it's still big and long. It's not something I need to own. But, you know, at a Saturday game day or at a game convention sort of thing, if I got, you know, the right set of three people who are going to mm -hmm. play fast enough and maybe, yeah. you know, have the right player aids and everything so it moves smoothly, I think, oh, yeah, I would definitely play it again. Which is not what I expected when I first played it. That's good. Does the science check out? A1, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I kind of thought so. Ah, I'm kind of in the same boat where I was not quite expecting the level of enjoyment I'd got out of Terraforming Mars. Um, I, I played it four player. Uh, it wasn't as long as I expected. I did enjoy it in that it, it had that engine building to me. Um, I, I like engine builders. Uh, but I felt like it had some things that held me back. There were cards that were in my hand that I'm looking at going, okay, well, this is just clogging my hand. I'm not able to do anything with it. No, you can spend and, it, for, you can yeah. it for a dollar. Which yeah, is but near worth it. For near worth it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Believe me, I had that game in one of them. And it just... It's it, coming, right? <laughs> all I kept seeing was theme, theme, theme. And they, they did an amazing job on the theme. But I felt more like I was put pushing cubes around. Mm. Yeah. And I wasn't really getting enough done out on Mars that I wanted to get done. Mm -hmm. I think if I had more cards that... It's possible that my starting hand didn't work well. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't get out there. But it felt like I had things that I'm like, wow, this would be a great card later, but it doesn't do anything for me now. Yeah. But... Um, they they did a very nice job getting the theme to work together and getting all the components to work together. So I I think it may have just been an experience with my hand. It's possible. So, it's a it's one of those games where I mean, there's a you can draft, that's why people a lot of do the draft. I don't think I ever want to play it with the draft. Just give me ten cards and let's just start. Right? So I think Lincoln had a similar yeah, yeah, so experience. I, I played the game um uh with the jury at uh 
BGG Spring with two jurors who had either not played it or played it a little. And um, for me, I got stuck in a weird... Now, I like the game. I think it's really, really quite good, and it's actually got some fun stuff going on. But I had a hand of cards that were unable to build for a long time. Mm -hmm. I had seven cards that... Too many elements had to happen for me to get to that place, and I wasn't going to be the guy moving, advancing those things to get to that point. And then I had three other cards, one of which turns out I shouldn't have had, <laughs> uh, was one of the expansion corporation mm -hmm. cards or something mm -hmm. like that. And I didn't know that. And um, the other <clears throat> two were very expensive. And those are two cards I saved, because uh, those will probably be good. Mm. Of course, it happened yeah. at the end of the game. And I ended up winning that game because... People were doing things that were benefiting me. I'm like, are you sure you want to do that <laughs> award? Because I'm way ahead of you. Mm. You're never going to catch up to me on, um, like, the banking or whatever it was. Uh, but I really, I think it's great. My disappointment, and I'm happy for Stephen uh, Bonacore because this is a big hit for him, and it's selling really well. It was very hard for us to get a copy to actually yeah. play it on the show. Um but I'm super glad we finally got. Haven't it. they announced five expansions already, or something? I think like there's that, a right? bunch. There's supposed to be it's, three coming. Like I, I, I was supposed to get Origins, and it didn't. They've make announced it. How many, five titles. Does, how many something. moons does Mars have? Does it have moons? It has two. Two. Moons. So there should only be two expansions. <laughs> They're already in there. The, Are they? Yeah, 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 yeah. part of the board. Yeah. The um, oh, yeah. I think there's but, cards. But for the both. thing that I yeah, don't, I I'm too. disappointed <laughs> in this game at because it's a seventy dollar game. Yeah. Uh, if you can buy it, and um. I really don't like the components. I the mat is terrible. Terrible, and that's why we played with these acrylic uh, sheets over them mm -hmm. that let you lock those pieces in place. It, I, Im it impacts the play of the game. It does. Right? You bump it, and there's no way you're going to remember yeah. ever. Yeah. And it's too easy to bump things. And it, I don't know what the situation was on that because Steven does not do that normally. So I don't know if his partners or what what the deal was because it looks nice. The you know the cubes are neat looking, but they're not perfectly flat, and so they're kind of rocking, and all this stuff is just so bizarre. And you know when you compare it to Scythe, which is not that much more money, mm -hmm. the production but, but on that super well produced exactly. Yeah. And there's no bump in those cubes because they are in there. Now, again, I it's a minor thing, and what all I feel is he should just print some stuff out that lets people buy those for 10 bucks so they can just replace the mats. If you just replace the mat, it will make yeah. such a huge difference It's part in the of the game yeah. playing experience. My, what, the, sure. my first play of this was like a tricked out copy and there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that that helped me like the game. Absolutely. But just playing with the tricked out copy and the <clears throat> was just fun. Yeah. In the same way that any game that has kind of cool components is just fun, right? That yeah, was my experience too because I played with the, the trays. So yeah. The, the things locked That's in. what I had was the trays. And had That's, I not... Yeah. Yeah. I think it would have been not nearly as good of an experience. Yeah, it's oh, a yeah. downer. I, I, Eric Martin made a joke that he will wait five years for the deluxe version. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When they've yeah. got new art and new, better components, you know, to help uh, resolve and they, some of those issues. And they boiled down the essential edition of the 17 expansions into the, yeah, just yeah, the best yeah. four. Here are the good right. things. Yeah. All right, Nikki, what did you think about Terraforming Mars? Um, my first play was kind of rough. Um, we had the full... Compliment. Compliment five players, of people. Four players, yeah. And five, uh, yeah. it was late at night. So. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> and I was in the game with Lincoln where he had a really horrible starting hand. So I don't know how colored all of this is. Um, he did end up winning the game, which was great because he managed to come out of the hole. My starting hand was wonderful. Um, <laughs> For me, there was a lot of fiddly note keeping on mm. that board, and that just, I was always asking for what, what okay, that, that goes up, that yeah. goes down. I mean, some of it, of course, I got it was pretty straightforward, but some of it was a little like, okay, wait, I did that, are you sure I'm supposed to do this? Oh, wait, no, you weren't, and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and then, to have it knocked by dropping a cube in the wrong place and having oh, all your no. cubes go. Oh, no. They, they kind of scattered a little, yeah. So that was um, difficult. Um, I mean, I pretty much got them back where right. where they needed to be. But so, mm, but 
and then the art was was difficult to, for me as a designer to see like their clip arty kind of look. Yeah, there were some little, clip art things and, yeah. and photo, <clears throat> photos that were not great. Yeah, and I, I just but it's a lot of art for these. I, a family yeah. put this game together basically. Wow. I yeah. Well, that's I mean, great considering. But I in my game we had an artist playing too. Greg, you know Greg and. Mm -hmm. um, he had the same comment. I yeah. didn't even notice. I'm playing out yeah. with all this right. cool stuff. Right. And he said, yeah, I wish the art was a little better. Yeah. there. I mean, you know, there are game players that you can just give them Xerox pieces of paper <laughs> and they're totally fine with it as long as the mechanics work and it's a great game. I, right. I get right. that. I, I do. And the mechanics in this are really neat. But but when I looked at the cards and some of them looked like clip art and mm. I looked at the cubes and, and the, the colors are weird gold too. was coming off of the cubes and that sort of right. thing... That got a little err to me, just yeah. because those are things that I look at and I, I care about. Yeah, it's a whole experience, right? The whole, <clears throat> right. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So I, I do want to play it again. Having said all of that, I want to give it another try, um, and uh, and I, I and I want to like it more. Yeah, me too. It's um, very good. When I was finished with the first game, I don't remember what I said, but I said something. And then the next day, I, I came up to the guy that I told it to, and I said, you know what? I think I was just, I, I thought about it all night, and I, I reevaluate that opinion. I don't remember exactly <laughs> what it was. But it was pretty harsh. Because um, I, I ended up thinking about the game, like, all yeah. night. Mm -hmm. That means something. I Absolutely. think it means yes. something. Um, and so I do want to try it again. I do want to play it better. I like, I, I liked all the different things you could do. Do, you were worrying about the plant growth and the people and the air animals and the and animals and all of that. It wasn't just um, you're building a bubble on Mars and yeah, right. blah, blah, blah. You know, and do you have the money to do that? There was a definite path that I was trying to take that was different from uh, everyone else. And it kind of hindered me because people didn't get, like, the water going the direction I wanted it to go. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it was still... Um, Overall, I want to try it again. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed it after I took a few steps back from it and, and thought about that it. That makes sense. Aaron? Um, I feel like <laughs> there are definite heights to this game and definite disappointments, like we're all sort of covering. Um, I, I agree with Nikki that it definitely sticks with you, good or bad, and makes you want to think about it afterwards and maybe play it again, even if you didn't have a great experience. Um, the... The components are the component quality is a, is a big drawback, but we, I think feel like we've covered that. The the card deck I feel like is a strength and a weakness in this game. I played a five player game, which may not be the best way to jump into it. It was sort of a long drawn out game, but um, the card deck in this game is like this yeah. thick, yeah. and you know we got like thirty percent of the way through it. So there's still a lot of stuff in there I have not seen, which, which could that's could, weird, which could be cool, right? In that, our game, we we burned through that deck. Really, I Maybe absolutely was seeing cards that were nothing. There were things that people had discarded. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, we never got players. close to halfway. So maybe that's just the style we played or something, but I feel like there was a lot more to discover still. But that also, you know, uh, to jump back 12 or 13 years to Agricola, it's that some, you, here's your cards, and maybe they work together and maybe they don't. Yeah. You know, sometimes in Agricola you have uh, a plow and a guy who plants extra vegetables and a thing that gets you extra money for vegetables, and that's a perfect... Yeah. Right, they all work together, and that's a perfect strategy laid out for you. And... Sometimes that's going to happen in the cards you get in this thing, and sometimes you're going to end up with Lincoln's Hand, where these cards are 15 turns away from being useful. Right. So the only thing you can do is sell them off and hope to get better cards. So well, like, You're making a case for drafting in a weird way, right? I guess right. I, maybe I am. Uh, I, maybe I've just had that experience. But I'm just saying the, the size and variety of the deck is both a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. in this game. Oh. Uh, I, I had another thought on the deck after I'd played that perhaps some of these end game cards that could be set into two or three decks and you hit a certain point, you then shuffle those cards into well, the deck. The, the, and the good thing is is that it gives you a, when you have those you can plan ahead. Yeah. Having sure. those in your hand I think is actually essential. I mean I had the same problem you had. I didn't do enough on Mars. Like I felt like I, I'm barely putting anything on the board, and that was just the nature of the cards that I had. Um 
And when I finally was able to do that, most of the great stuff had been taken up, right? There was not a, any of those mm -hmm. really fantastic... Good spots. If you touch four water, you're going to do yeah. this, right? You know, it, it, it just wasn't happening. Well, the thing that I really liked about the game is... Um, sort of runs counter to what you said. The thing that surprises me about this game is that there are actually genuine sort of multiple paths to victory. Absolutely. And that you can, you can absolutely win this game and build almost nothing on Mars. Like, there are ways well, to do was, that was my game. Yeah, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you won. Now, but, part of the reason you won... Because other people did correct. things that totally helped. I had, in a weird way, one of the games I played was the same to you. I had a hand of cards that were all big, huge, powerful cards. But... I just thought, okay, let me just sit here with these cards and just do the thing I need to do. Let me just increase my um, money every turn and see if I can get to that point. And I just watched everybody else slowly sort of build their engine, but I was able to then just put the hammer down later on them. Now again, the people I was playing with, it was their first play, and if they were experienced players, I'd, probably, have, yeah. I'd probably be dead. <laughs> but, but I was sort of hardened in a way by the fact that Starting with that hand didn't hinder me as much as I thought it was going to, and that you can build tons of cities and win the game. You can build no cities and win the game. You well, can you can plant a lot of trees. You yeah. don't have to plant a lot of trees. Part of the game is terraforming Mars, right? Yeah. <laughs> and not doing that is disappointing. Like, yeah. I, I had fun. I do enjoy the game. My thing was is I'm not doing anything, right? I don't I'll yeah. buy some cards. I, I, I don't like doing that. And then I blew all those cards. As soon as I got to 16, because I did that achievement, yeah. I sold them off for a dollar a piece, which yeah. is really sad. <laughs> and, you know, just whatever I knew, I'm not going to be able to do this, I'm not going to be able to do this. Because I, it was tough. I it didn't come to, I didn't get to 16 cards very quickly, and you start with 10. <laughs> so it took yeah. me a long yeah. time yeah. to get to, to be able to, right. to even do that, that achievement. Which was weird. I mean, I did play some cards. Yeah. Um, I had to. I had to, or I wouldn't. I know been what able you're saying, though. When you when you're watching everybody else at the table doing all these things in their turn, and you're sitting there going, "Well, I can't do those things." Right. I thought in my game the same thing you thought. I thought, "Wow, am I dead? Can I possibly be dead by just sitting here and whatever?" And I thought, "Well, let's just see. Let's see if I can get there." So it worked out. But why isn't that a case for better game development? I mean, they could have. Rusty's already thrown out one idea. Another idea is that they have those little uh, icons at the bottom of cards. And so here's a starting hand. Here's five different starting mm -hmm. hands. Yes. Like give out. everybody a starting well, deck. And Eric that, Martin feels And then that that's would optional. Help it a lot. So like if you don't want to play with it, just shuffle yes. them up and go like normal. But here it is. And then along with that development, do the production of the physical production a little bit better. It just seems right. like think, that's a level yeah. of polish you expect from a prize winner. I yeah, I I hate to criticize this much, but I feel like it's underbaked. I think there there needs to be a little more polish well, and I thought feel, to it. I feel there's a lot of great gaming in here and people. Oh, I, love oh, it. I, I just agree. I think you once know, you have knowledge of it. Yeah, it I'm doesn't still matter. Vote for it. I yeah. want to play it right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but I really think there's things that need to be smoothed out. You know, there are local people and you know them. I, d I was going to mention that. There are at least yes. 3 of them. They this calendar year already have 50 plays of they're this game. They're closing in on 100. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but they're crazy. Um, <laughs> but but, but they clearly are, they are. there's something there. If right, there is something. There's right. a, there's now, an addiction. I don't know if there's a corollary there. to this, but these are also a race for the galaxy people and mm -hmm. I I found something like an efficiency engine. Well, because it's the big deck of cards. And the way, of course, they play drafting. So, and I, I feel like that's it's got that kind of it scratches that race itch for them, but in a much complicated way, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. in the way that the, in the way that this is deck building, but it has stuff added. Like this is potentially maybe a race, little bit of that big deck race, but more things with a game added to it. it. It's chewy enough for them, right? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot to yeah, dig into. They, do, they love that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's also tough. When you have a big, complicated game like this, your first play is always going to be tough anyway, yes. especially if it's late at night and you've got maximum people. I mean, that it feels like yeah, it started yeah. that way. That seems to be harsh, as opposed to, say, me, exit before we, the game. Yes, yeah, like, go I'm ahead. i do one more thing. Yeah, before. go ahead. Before we move on to our final game here in the uh, Kennerspiel group, I have one question for the table about Terraforming Mars, maybe starting with Mark and Nikki. I'm surprised nobody mentioned this yet. Do you feel that there are too many take that cards in Terraforming Mars, and did that detract from your enjoyment of the game? Apparently a lot? not, because I it's don't a, even remember It's her. a complaint that I've heard from several players. Yeah, you can lose a lot of plants in the game. And, and yeah, I wasn't in that game, so you I didn't get You can lose a lot that. of your base production and oh, really get hampered right. by people, people playing cards on it. Uh. Uh, no, it didn't really affect. Well, that's anything. a good point because, and it was kind of like you were talking about. In it has that same problem as you was pick a player. It's targeted, right? Yeah. And those um, aren't required, by the way. Though you don't have the take that is not mandatory. Agreed, but there's a lot of them in there. There yeah. was a lot, 
that probably would not be my favorite thing either. And it was the game's complex enough that you can't really tell who's going to win the game. I no, don't think you tough. could, particularly yeah. at the Unless you played halfway... 50 plus times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm never, even on games I love, they're not, they're not normally going to get to that level of right. play for me. So yeah, I didn't like that part as much either, but it seemed necessary. So it's like, you can't just pull that out Yeah. because you needed to pull players back a little it's bit. It's interesting. That didn't bother me as much in here for a weird reason. And that was that everyone, because the people knew that was there, a lot of people were sort of what happened to you by accident, but a lot of people were sort of just avoiding plants for the longest time because you just didn't want to lose them. Uh, I, I don't know why you keep saying plants. There are lots of take that cards that affect all kinds of production is what I was thinking about. Oh, I, I didn't see, in our game. It was mostly the asteroids is out there, the events, mm -hmm. and they mostly mm -hmm. stole plants. Mm -hmm. And oh, since everyone kind of knew that's what the, the standard take that was people, Again, in the game I played, avoided plants for a while, and then when you increase your plant production to be big enough, losing some plants is then not as harsh. Well, see, the deck is so big that we could have played completely different games. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about, I had a little game with a lot of like, increase your production by one and decrease Rusty's by one. Right. Or increase, do this by two and e decrease somebody else's. So, right. especially for like starting to build up your engine, which a lot of people have difficulty with, or maybe the cards aren't letting you. To knock back your production earlier in the game can be a killer, and it really. Yeah, that does. Seem I harsh. had players who were like, "This is not that fun because I worked for a long time to get this production up, and now people are hammering it." You could always, I suppose, just take those cards out. You could, but it might I throw the balance of the game off. Well, yeah. for me, because there was the drafting at the beginning of each round, I just didn't choose cards. Not that drafting; did that. you're just drawing three cards. Well, yeah, the yeah. drawing three and paying and buying for which yeah. ones you oh, wanted right. to keep. Yeah. I just wouldn't buy those cards. And I did play one or two get get you cards because I felt the guy was totally the leader. But I just crafted my hand of cards to the way I wanted to play. Yeah, I played a lot of them actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. From the guy who said, "What were these even in the?" I game? forgot because I forgot because it was me <laughs> playing. Forgot. They never had <laughs> them. Yeah. Did you win your game? No, and in the beginning, I like you know, I hit you, I hit you, I sort of toggle, and then we figured Spread out who's the out, winner, yeah. and then we kept hitting what turned out to be the game leader all the time, mm -hmm. which is why I think maybe you can't pull them out so right, easily because you need some way to to pull them in a little bit. He still won. Yeah. So, you're right though to point it out. Not my favorite mechanic. Okay. In the world. Well, uh, in fairness to terraforming Mars, uh, a lot of us have only played this maybe one or two times. Yeah. So we haven't well, necessarily... I'm sure would benefit from multiple And exactly players. what you said earlier, Nikki, there's definitely... I was surprised at how much I was thinking about it afterwards. Yeah. And like, oh, that could be... I could try that or I could try that. Mm. There's definitely something here. And it's tough when you play a Kennerspiel game, the, the in theory, thicker, chewier games, the first time if there are rules like that that you're trying to grasp, which to me is what's brilliant about Exit the Game, The Abandoned Cabin, a game you're going to play once... So you don't have to worry about, well, I'll get the rules this time, and then the second time, I'll really know what I'm doing. Yeah. You just got to do it. It's this beautiful escape room in a box game. Spoiler alert, as you can probably tell, it's my favorite of the three. <laughs> and uh, I, really, I really like this as a Kennerspiel choice. It seems not like a Kennerspiel choice to me in the good way. It's... It's not this big, thick, chewy, complicated game. Well, they're game. not really. It's just advanced. Right. Yeah. I know. I yeah. think, I was saying, that's what's great. I think it, this definitely doesn't belong over here. The exit does not belong with right, these other Right, but people games. get the, in their head, the that big, these are chewy. The these are longer, deeper, deeper, yeah, yeah, heavier. Yeah, epics, right. And, and this one is kind of like a tease, mm -hmm. right? Because people are like, oh, but it really isn't that deep. It's definitely deep, but it's not chewy. Right. More difficult. Yeah. We should mention that the entire series is up for the award, correct? Yes, yes. Not just this one yes. game. There's two There's others three for different now. episodes. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. So they nominated the series. Yeah, Exit the Game. Yeah. Or the three together, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and, which come and out more. Yeah. Having not played the other two, I believe you told me, right, this is the easiest of the three? That's what I've heard. I've only played total two of them now. I've not played the most difficult one, which Rusty's played. And mm -hmm. It's puzzle solving, so I can see where that would not necessarily be also a family game, regardless of I think how much time you spend or how. For sure. mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I love that they did it. More importantly, I think the Incas and Marcus Brand and Cosmos, Inca. Inca and Marcus Brand and Cosmos did a spectacular job. Yeah. It was, I was 
In the same way that I was sort of surprised because I was thinking, oh, no, I don't like Terry Morgan Mars, not my kind of game. And then I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I had that chip on my shoulder like, oh, I'm a puzzle guy. This game yeah. is going to be dumb and not... <laughs> yeah. God, it was not. It was terrific. <laughs> the, the level of the puzzles was really great. They were creative and interesting and fun and... And the when we played it, I mean, it was a, couldn't have been more of a group effort, you know. Yeah. Everybody, uh, you know, you had at least two <clears throat> or three contributions that were like vital for us to move forward, and everybody did. It was really neat. Yeah, but does it have? Is it a game? See, that's the biggest complaint a lot of people have about this. <laughs> is it a game? Yeah, it's totally a game. You mean it's as opposed puzzle. to an experience? It's a puzzle. No, it's a bunch of puzzles linked into a game. I agree. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it is. It is. Is Time Stories a game? It's a bunch of miniature mazes or story links Plus, I wrote you yeah, know, yeah. crammed into a game experience. I I see what people are saying, but no, I say I, yes, I, it's a game. I'm with uh, Dave on this. It's amazing. All of the puzzle games I've played so far, escape room games, um, have been great. Um, there are things to nitpick about some of the other ones, but I like that this one does not use... An app, even though I enjoy the app in Unlock, I like that it's self-contained. There's something kind of cool and old school about they figured out a way to have this like deck of cards that does the thing it needs to do for you. Mm-hmm. And just the inventiveness of that was really cool. Absolutely. It says right there, exit the game. It's obviously a game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have too much more to add either. Uh, I really enjoyed this exit the game experience and it really surprised me. I, I thought, Escape room in a box, come on. Like, that's yeah. not really going to be anything like an escape room or really that enjoyable. And it really blew me away, sort of, with the experience. Uh, right. I, you know, I think I said this on our show, or maybe it was after we stopped the cameras, but, like, when we played it, I had just had, like, five or six people over to my house, and it would have been perfect to, like, play after dinner with those mm. people. And I wish I had known about it at that point, although then we would have had to play a different one on the show. <laughs> but still, you know... Uh, it's not that often that a game that I don't have any expectations for makes me go, oh, I, I really got to get some of the other ones and try them. That was really fun. Yeah. Um, I, I love the destruction element where you really mm-hmm. got to cut pieces up and don't you're going to play don't this once. Don't be too once. spoilery. No. No, they tell you oh, that. They tell you, right? Because right. you might have to do stuff. You like might that. have to do stuff. It's a one-shot game. You right. you could try to play Save this to game once, but you can't but play it again necessarily. Okay. No. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you were just kind of sit there and or forever ago, you watch know. people do it. Yeah. But I li- I like that it's a one-use item essentially. You're going to use it up when you play the game. Yeah, that's very cool. And it, it really was uh, impressive on a you know surprising level where I didn't expect much from it. Interesting. My wheelhouse. This is <laughs> this is probably my favorite of everything I've played probably in the last year. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, this if if they had a hundred of these, I'd be going through them. <laughs> I'm like, give me the next one, give me the next one. Because it's the attention to detail in this, the artwork and the detail, and the the way the game forces you to pay attention to that detail. That it, it's not that they went to all this work and you're going to miss it. You have to see it. They they make sure that you don't miss anything in here. And that you get the full experience every time you open up one of these boxes. And for there's me... No, there's it, nothing wasted, right? Like, you're never going to not get to a certain part of it. Right. It's... it's You will... They find a way to help you complete this. Yeah. And you never feel True. like... You never feel like, oh, I didn't finish that, and I didn't get my money's worth. Well, there's no limitation on time on this. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is not normally for an escape room, because they need to get somebody else right. in there. But a really smart oh, choice, in my opinion. Or, you know? agreed. Just let people have the fun they want to right. have with it. Or the clue cards, either, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you might not feel like you did a great job if you had to read every single clue card to win the game, but you, you, you're going to win the game, eventually, right. right? You can always get a clue for a puzzle you're just not getting. So that's another great decision, like... You can always get there in these games eventually, if you need to. I'm I, I'll, I'm going to ask you and Nikki what you thought about this in a second, but to just to jump all the way back to the very beginning of the show, where I said that Magic Maze was the innovative and interesting and new choice of the Spiel trio. This I think we're all agreeing is the innovative and inventive and like new experience choice of these three games. Well, I didn't think about it till just now, but it occurs to me that last year's choices, you know what this is? This is Pandemic Legacy and, and Time, time stories. stories smushed together <laughs> in a simpler form with a shorter running time. I mean, yep. in a way, 
it is kind of, huh. it takes, I mean, not, not on purpose. I'm not saying anyone said, let's take no, those two games. But, but and it make... fills that, that niche perfectly well. Nikki, what did you think of Exit the Game? Exit the Game, I've played two of them. Oh. And the first one was meh. And then oh. this, the cabin one, I've enjoyed a lot. What, what did you not like as much about the, the <clears throat> secret lab? The secret lab, I think part of it was we were trying to save the game for other people to play. <clears throat> oh. So we were tracing and holding it up oh. to the yeah, light. You and denied yourself the fun of destroying, <laughs> right. destroying things. You gotta do that. Um, or perhaps incorrectly writing on <clears throat> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or there's that. <laughs> Um, with with our game, it felt like a real group effort. We were all trying. We mm -hmm. were all trying to let each other have a chance to to do something. In the other game I played, it kind of I felt like I was sort of locked out, um, and there were and a, we were all locked in. There, were, yeah, yeah, and there were the other players in the game were very, and I wasn't aggressive enough and like let me do this you just and that. You just so got a little frozen. Yeah, I kind of felt yeah. like I was kind of locked out. Ah, excuse me. Don't, don't cry. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> not crying. I'm, I know you're not. Sorry. Um, mm, um, but I want to play the third one. Yes. Yeah, me what, too. What is, yeah. And it's supposed I to play be the, the second really, really one. hard Pharaoh's one. Pharaoh's Tomb is the hardest one. And then there's three yeah. more coming. In, yeah. In, no, I, mean, I think there's already three more after that. <laughs> no, there's I nine want already. To play them. But oh, I'm saying okay. there's three yeah. English coming yeah, okay. in September, October, I believe. Wow. <clears throat> so... I'm not a puzzle person, as you maybe remember, and, and so when I, pl I played the other two, as it turns out, okay. not, not Abandoned Cabin, and I played one with gamers, one with family, of all things, and and partly is I just wanted to see what it's about, because I'm curious. I've never been to an escape room, ah. probably because I knew I wouldn't like that kind of thing, mm -hmm. I thought, anyway. And so when we played, I had this <laughs> experience that you were kind of alluding to where uh, how, the scoring goes how many stars? I mean, we went we took zero ever. We used a whole bunch of clue cards. We you know scored in the basement, but we <laughs> yeah. had a pretty good time doing that. Mm. Yeah. But I thought it was a clever design thing. That's like uh, it didn't need a referee. No, no. It doesn't require one person to s stand back and read the rule book and know right. how it all works. It happens with cards, and the game doesn't stop. It doesn't get locked, right. even if you're a bunch of dummies sitting around the table and can't right. figure it out. That was really clever, I thought. And so, based on that experience, we did the what supposedly is the toughest one first. Mm -hmm. Then we did the uh, uh, the lab one with family. And that was an interesting experience, too, because it was so bizarre, actually, because <laughs> my, my wife is, had told me, like, oh, we're signed up. We're going to do an escape room with this other couple sometime. I thought, I don't think you'd like that, actually. So we played it, and we got probably through exit, and she says, I hate this. She quit it. Said, That's what the escape room is going to be like. You know, she says, well, I'm not sure we're going anymore. <laughs> On the other hand, my son, who hardly ever plays games with us, was locked in. I mean, yeah. he was really into it. And I said, well, we got stuck. Let's do the clues. We don't need a clue. You know, we can figure this out. Right. right. And everyone else had drifted away. It was he and I doing it. So <laughs> it was a great and interesting experience. And just like Aaron said, it was very different from any sort of right. uh, other type of thing I've had in all these games. We got you know hundreds of games in the garage, and this was very unique in terms of the player experience. So it's very innovative. I don't really care a darn you know anything about whether it's a game or not. It, no, no, it I, certainly is. I'm I, with you. I, I know I, you're doing the strong. I heard argument, from right? October that in Germany at Essen, because it was already out, and they were going crazy for it already. Everybody hmm. I talked to really, really loved these games and were freaking out. So. I feel this has definitely got something in its favor, potentially for winning, too. And I love the, uh, I say packaging, but just the whole production that it's a small game, it's cheap, it's disposable. Yeah, you would have thrown away a big box. Yeah, it almost has garbage. to be cheap to be disposable, right? Right, right. right. I mean, they could have done something different where you had a way to but reduce still, components. But still, but, yeah, you had a base piece and, and just yeah. cycled in the cards or something yeah. like that. I like that. it. It's like an impulse box oh, yeah. sort of thing. But yeah. terrifically produced. It's, yeah. it's surprising to me how... Uh, Gorgeous it is for the that twelve or fifteen dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. Well, and the, there's a lot of development in that, I would think. As a I mean, mm -hmm. you're a puzzle guy, you know, you've done that stuff. Yeah, there were, you know, when escape rooms sort of took off, there were a couple of escape room in a box things that sort of first came out. And those were like real escape rooms in the sense that they were sort of hit or miss. And this definitely has the feel of that kind of next generation where some of the bugs get worked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's kind of like the better, elegant, professional version right. of it. Yeah. <clears throat> not that some of those weird well, kickstarty I... escape room in the box things, not that some of them aren't really cool and great, but they're definitely... I played one 
that itself comes with like three or four different things. And one of those was like, oh my God. And then one of them was like, if I'd played this first, I would never have played the other ones in the box. Right. You know, it's very hit or miss in that regard. Yeah. But you know, escape rooms in the real world are like that. Well, Exit had one thing that you were that we were talking about earlier that makes it kind of better than a real escape room, and that it everybody's can see everything. Yes. Now some escape oh, yeah. some escape rooms are really nicely designed so that it, it number of people almost don't don't matter and. But yeah, there is something that can happen in a physical escape room, especially the rooms that have a max of like 10 or 12 in which for completely understandable financial reasons, the room is gonna fill that. So if the six of us wanna do a room and it's 10 people max, we might be with four strangers that day because mm. they wanna sell those tickets and I can't blame them for that. But now you're in a room for the people you don't even know and the puzzles themselves can be designed in such a way that you don't see like half the stuff. You're doing this thing over here and someone goes, hey, I got this gizmo. And you're like, oh, where did that come from? Oh, it was really cool. There was a thing and it yeah. opened up and we did this magnets and like, yeah. oh, I didn't get to see that. Right. And you can see it afterwards when they do like a little walkthrough, but that's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you're right. What's nice about this is it's not, I don't know about the other ones, but this one specifically is not completely linear. It is right. for the most part linear, but there were definitely a couple of times in which we could spread well, fans out, out yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well yeah. we can sort of spread out, okay i'll do this and you do that and i'll do this and you do yeah. that and that's You've what you want like two to four active tasks in front of you well that the escape rooms have that as well it's they true. do it the good ones do yes but you're right this one had that feel of i never felt like there was anything i missed yeah while we we're doing this mm -hmm. even if i didn't solve something or even if i wasn't the one contributing to it i at least saw it happen like if I don't see whatever the weird gizmo is over here, like at least I want to see it. Yeah. If I can't be, if I'm not the one doing the magnets or whatever, right. I want to at least see when it happens. <laughs> you know, a room that has like some piece of cool tech. Uh, let's, since we're here, let's do our voting thing. Uh, does anyone have anything else they need to say, want to say, before no. we get to the voting? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to three, two, one point, and we're going to vote for the game that we want to win. Mm -hmm. This is the wow, game that we want to win. <laughs> yeah, basically your favorite of the three. Everybody ready? No. <sighs> I, don't right. know. I, I think that this year is going to be tough. I, I think I all, agree. They all, all have high points. sets have something other than, <clears throat> I guess, Aaron doesn't like Team Domino, but I think they all have something really, really great to offer. Oh, I agree. That, I it's mean, funny. Team I thought, Domino's just not my style, yes, but yeah, I agree yeah. that all these games have really good things going on. It's funny you say that. I, I mean, I already spoil alert, but I, I <laughs> felt like last year's Kenner Spiel was the hard choice for me. Those games were like, wow, this for me is easy. <laughs> right, right. It is. It's totally easy. Okay. So Ready? what we want? What yeah. we you want. want. Basically what your you favorite of the three. Yes. What you what yeah, you would you what you would give the award to, which is not necessarily your favorite, but probably. Here we go. Three, two, one, point. Three, two, one, point. Whoa. All right, look at that. Yeah, four three, exits. Four exits, yeah. And one Mark Raiders, Mars, one Nikki Mars. Raiders. All right. All right, here comes the real vote. Now vote for what you think will win. What right. the jury? What, what we, you think the jury? Where where I predicting really the jury's this, mind. That's always harder. This is where points are won or lost. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you, because you keep a spreadsheet, right? I it's like, important. I like a spreadsheet. It is Mark's I like we're doing that. Okay. <laughs> Harry, Harry, this is hard though. <laughs> oh, agreed. You ready? Three, two, one, point. Wow. So Rusty's, Rusty on this. Thinks Rusty's, Rusty's on Raiders and then everybody Tell me why else you think Raiders. Yeah, That's I, interesting. I, I think the point that Exit isn't quite so much that standard game. It doesn't have the replayability. It's it's a one-time shot and then you've lost those players. You're going to get the you're going to get the word of mouth of how great this is, but I think it's it's a limited item. Whereas Raiders Except there's nine of them right now. Right now. You right could be now, right but, because Pandemic Legacy did not win last year, and Time Stories did not win last year, but I think part of the reason maybe they didn't win was they were too big and long and complicated sort of for what it was. There's a lot of things. I think the, sim <clears throat> I think the simplicity of this might help it in that regard. I think it might. But, but you, I think, you could be right. I, think I see Rusty's point yeah. also. I almost think this Raiders, Raiders as well. The most mainstream yes. of the three. It's That's of, true. It's a safe pick. Well, yeah. last year's <laughs> end up being Isle of oh, Sky, which right. was the most mainstream. Right, movie. right. That's right. True. But again, I think because Pandemic Legacy, you're right, maybe they said, look, we've brought awareness to these two, and now let's give it to the game. Right. Well, like I don't, more I don't like think that there's game. that discussion going on. That may be what each person might have thought, but what ultimately, you know, there's... But I, 
I feel but, like it always seems to us in our community that <laughs> yeah, that course. pandemic legacy and time stories have that buzz and that like, oh, it's the new, like, did yeah. you hear about? Yeah. And like, I feel like well, that's, this is... That was what I said last year, I think, about pandemic legacy. I heard, right, a po- I listened to a podcast of uh, screenwriters, and they were going crazy for that game, oh. pandemic legacy, and all this stuff. So to me, the reach of that game was already great, and yeah. they didn't necessarily need to win. But I sure was sad it didn't win. I also I, I, I felt it was the one game that was like, you're gonna play at least twelve of these. I'm, I know. I'm still shocked. Candy yeah. was out on that I'm one shocked. too before. Yeah, but but the thing was, is it's <laughs> like, I'm done with Isle of Sky. I think it's yeah. a great game. Yeah. I like the design. The, I think uh, the designers are actually very very talented, and there's a lot of great stuff going on there. But I have no desire to pull that out. And I was ready. I was waiting to go for the rest of uh, Pandemic Legacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> This one has me wanting to buy more copies of these games, you know, different yeah, games. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Totally. I also, we, I think I said this last year, but I also felt like that. You know how you win your Oscar for, like, the <laughs> thing you did two years right, ago? Right, yeah. right, right. I felt like Pandemic didn't win anything, and I felt like it could, the original Pandemic. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I thought maybe the legacy would was get the, be the, the, the extra like, Pandemic, pandemic was vote, nominated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And was terrific. I was disappointed that it didn't win, too, yeah. on that one, because I thought, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it... The deck in that thing is amazing. Yeah, so. but every year we we do this. The whole hobby does this: is they meta game. Yeah, yes. The, the, pig, the jury the picks. picks. Yes. And I'm not so sure they're. I mean, I'm not sure how much gaming is going on. No, with and picks. Your, I think your it's just a spreadsheet has already proven that I'm consistently wrong. So, <laughs> arguably, I should change my thinking. But I'm not interested I. in that. I'm okay. interested in staying true to myself, Mark Johnson. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you, for your jury pick, what you think the jury? That's my problem. Is like thinking like what the jury might select. Yeah, but, I always. I'm never. I'm always picking what I hope the jury will pick. Yeah. It's really hard to. Let's move over to here. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, same deal. The yes. big prize. This is the drum roll. Oh, <laughs> it's the drum roll for the big prize. Yes. So, we're okay. For which we're voting for the one that we would. You would. We would. You're for the one that we would dig win. Oh, hang on. I know. I know. See, to me, no. this is harder than yes. this. Yeah. 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 But obviously, because like you said, this is in my wheelhouse too, so it made it yeah. easier for me. But I is goodbye. Oh. No idea. Okay. No idea. Okay. I, I'm ready. This is yeah, what okay. we pick. Yeah. This is what we yes. would. This is what we would award. Ready? Three, two, one, point. Oh, wow, this is all over the place. Wow, well, yeah, it's okay. two, two to two, two, two and two. Yeah. Me and Lincoln, Lincoln Nikki and Rusty, and Mark and Dave pick that. Uh, wow, that is an. We've never had an even exact split no. that I know of. And the That's thing amazing. is, I don't know that this is my jury I, pick. Well. You well, think this let's, is the jury pick? Let's see. No, sh- 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 okay, don't right. spoil it. Don't be talking like that yet. I would, oh, yeah, that'd be great. All of us pick a different pick for the jury. <laughs> and it's still 2-2-2. Two, two, two. <laughs> Come on, folks. Mind right. meld. We can make it happen. All right, ready? No. Three, two, one. Play. <laughs> now it's three, oh. two, one. Okay. Oh, Lincoln, you think this will do it? I think it has a good three, chance. Three, two, and Lincoln I hope so this me. wins, obviously, because it was my So we pick, have a but... slight... Jury mind reading pick for El Dorado. Well, Slight. but pretty spread around. It yeah, is very spread around. around. It, I almost picked that if for nothing else because it's from Ravensburger and it has Canizia and there's sort of like that. This is the hobby. It's the, the it's the mainstream. It's yeah. the safe, that's why I picked it. Pick. It's the safe pick. That's why I picked I don't this know. one. For I, it's tough. I almost picked it. I for don't like too. it. Also has a little to call thing. I to call really one. I don't like, like picking. Two. One of the games in this one. This yeah. is very difficult yeah. because they each have something wonderful to offer. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to win. No, that's a, I don't even like pick. picking my the one that's my favorite. <laughs> right. It's just a magic maze. Like I said, in editing that, I was like, "Wow, this is just great." It's just great to see people working together, and those the the, the struggles. It was just amazing. It's so amazing to me. For me, excuse me. For me, I picked it because it's the one I hope the jury picks. Yeah. I, I, I think it'd be, no. yeah. I think this would be a really cool pick, but it again, it's you're well. I, I right. hope so too. I just this isn't this isn't a bad my choice of this. It's just I think that it's got something there for people. Like since it's the family game, right? Yep. This one's gonna be like the easiest one for people to get. Yeah. I mean, I love this game. That's a hobby grower. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm, gonna no, change, I I'm gonna change. My I don't know. That, that, I don't know that that's how the jury's gonna think Damn about it. it. But boy, I think that that's got exactly what Mark says: the, the, yeah, the ability to grow the hobby. Too. He's well, we will find now. out on July seventeenth. Seventeenth. All right. Cool. We'll find out on July seventeenth. Well, cool. Thanks, Dave, for leading us through. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.